What a wonderful day this is for you. You say, well, maybe for you, but not for me. For you. Jesus made this day. You're alive and He loves you and He has a plan for your day. So thank God for His love and that this is a good day, the day the Lord has made. And we'll rejoice, hallelujah, and be glad in it and not grumble and murmur and look down. We'll look up to Him. What can He do today? Maybe your biggest miracle. And today, we are so excited. Sarah and I are really excited about our special guest, Deborah Pagay. Oh, Yay! Thank you so she much. Is so oh. good. So delighted to be here. And she is going to be sharing how you can get your finances into working order and miraculous provision. Really, seriously. She really has something from the heart of God and her own experience to share in this wonderful book called 30 Days to Taming Your Finances. Everybody has concern about finances. If I ask people for a prayer request, they always throw the finances in there. So how can this day affect you in the most positive way you can imagine? So Deborah, share with us because this is out of your own experience, out of your walk with God too. Absolutely. Both. And I want to start out by saying that we all have the ability to understand finances. Mm -hmm. So if there's anybody out there who's saying, I just don't understand finances. Listen, God gives wisdom to the wise. Mm -hmm. I always say when I do a financial seminar, put your hands on your head and say, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. So this isn't going to be technical and hard. Everybody's going to have the ability to understand this. The Bible says money answers all things. And that's true. But we need more in life than things. But money does answer all things. So money mm -hmm. does affect us all. Because try to go one day without using a thing. Mm -hmm. We need things. Right. But God, but God is the provider of those things. And so I like to get into the principles of how do we make sure we have God on our side? How can we ensure ourselves against lack? And it starts with giving. I know people, some people don't want to hear that, and I've gotten some mail. Don't teach people about tithing. I've been a tither since I was 18 years old, wow. and I have never been broke, honestly. I've never had a point in my life I couldn't pay for something. I've never had to put a bill on hold and, and wait for a check. Hmm. Never. I and mean, my husband, I've been married 33 years, and I say this with great humility, uh, and we have never not tithed. In 33 years, we have consistently tithed. Because we know that's the key. Mm -hmm. Even during the economy, my husband's job died. And uh, my husband said, you know what? We're going to keep giving. Not only are we going to keep paying God his, his part, but we're going to give the offerings and the alms. Mm -hmm. That's so important to mm -hmm. understand those three levels of right, giving. Right. Tithes, offerings, and alms. Mm -hmm. You know, the tithe we pay just for review and the offerings we give. But the alms, oh my goodness. I was studying this the other night. And it says, he that uh, pitied the poor. Mm -hmm. Lends to the Lord. Exactly. Oh my God, that and is the awesome. The Lord repays mm -hmm. tremendous interest. Tremendous, mm -hmm. tremendous. So it's something about giving. And I know a lot of people may say during this season, I don't have anything. You know, I, I'm just trying to survive. And I, I can't pay tithes. I'm trying to survive. Mm -hmm. I say it's an act of faith. Mm -hmm. You got to do it. You can't yeah. afford not to do it. And you know, we have people watching right now that need prayer for their finances. Right. I mean, they right. need prayer. They need prayer for wisdom. They need prayr for the lack of finances. Yes. They need prayer for how to use what they have, how to be more efficient, how to really see, stretch the dollar, stretch the pennies, stretch it all. So if you're struggling right now with your finances, get on the phone, call right now, or get on the website. We want to pray for you. And all of us need wisdom in our finances. And you know, Deborah, you're a CPA. Yes. And by training, so you have kind of a good feel for how to use money and how to be real wise about it. And, and I love in your book, you talk about taming your finances and of course, giving. Yeah. Giving and, and really giving, it comes out of being generous. Absolutely. And just and out of obedience. Yeah. And then when you see the result, it kind of motivates you to want to continue to give because mm. we've seen the results. I, I got a free MBA from USC just giving. Honestly, I paid nothing. There are people who are still wow. paying back for their graduate degrees or wow. college education. Paid absolutely zero Amazing. fellowship. It's just God himself. But I, I planted a seed. I said, God, I'm going to give this and I'm just standing mm. in the gap that you're going to uh, bless this seed. Mm. And, and he did it. You know, mm -hmm. some things you just don't qualify for. It's just the grace of God. He surrounds you with favor, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to talk about tithing. Yes. What it really is okay. is 10% Percent. of your salary. So 90% right. is yours. That's right. But 10%, 10 
you sow 10 and the 90% goes further. And you sow it off the top. So I always tell people mm -hmm. who say, I can't afford to, how can you not afford to do something that you took off the top? Exactly. <laughs> you can afford it. That is so good. Yeah. And that yeah. goes to your church. That goes to your church. And everyone should be in a local church. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe that I too. I do too. Then offerings is above that. Over and above. Not so, a reallocation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. if you see yes. a certain need or someone who wants right. a partner, that's your offering. Offerings, that's and right. And that's good. But Sarah, alms sowing makes me think of you and saving Moses. I know, I know. Yeah. And alms oh. is when you give to the poor yes. and people who can't, who don't have the resources. And, you know, I was praying about this the other day and I, God just dropped this verse in my heart that completely took my breath away. And uh, it's in... Uh, Isaiah 25, 4, because saving Moses is all, all about helping mm -hmm. babies, saving yes, babies, yes. really. And it says in Isaiah 25, 4, you have been a defense for the helpless, a defense for the needy in distress, a refuge for the storm, a shade from the heat. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do with night care. We yes. take care of the babies of prostitutes because they're helpless. Those babies are helpless that's awesome. and they need defense and they need a refuge in the storm. Can I just tell you, you have no idea. Mm. And that's exactly alms goes to this. Absolutely. Right? Oh, and a lot of times goodness. we'll give, we'll take our tithes and invest it in alms. And so, well, you know, there's a widow over here. No, no, right. give, give that part right. that, you know, give the alms that's over and above. And you know what alms, listen, uh, in, in, ten, in the 10th chapter of Acts where Cornelius was praying yep. and the Lord says, your prayers and your alms have come it. up for a memorial. I know Do you it. know what the God sets cool. up is in his perpetual memory? I know. Your alms have come up for a memorial. God mm -hmm. never forgets. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He never forgets and he yep. constantly rewards you for those mm -hmm. alms. We had a friend who had a heart attack and we sent her on a trip to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we, it, it, this was when we were first married. And we had saved for that trip for a long time. She was an evangelist. We said, let's, let's give her our trip. Sure. Sarah, from that one seed, we have been all over the world. Wow. I mean, we have just been everywhere. Here's a trip. There's a trip, yeah. you know, just free <laughs> or, or little or nothing. Wow. <laughs> we say, listen, God never forgets. No. It's an aisle when you help mm -hmm. the poor. God mm -hmm. writes out an IOU. He that has pity on the poor is lending to mm -hmm. God. So we can't overemphasize that. We'll talk mm -hmm. about other things, but I'm telling you, sure. that's the bedrock of mm -hmm. making sure that you've insured yourself against mm -hmm. lack. Mm -hmm. That's really and good. And it's a high percentage that he pays back. Yes. Much higher than your bank. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's just above what you can imagine, oh, I think. And I'm thinking right now of Oral Roberts. Yes. You know, he got his biggest gift when he was 90. Wow. Just 70 million, that's all. <laughs> and you know he's been a tither, offerings, taught it, alms sowing mm -hmm. around oh, the world. Gosh. And people think, oh, you're too old to get anything. Don't oh, ever think goodness. like that. Mm -hmm. And God can be very last minute too. He you can. know, you may say, well, I tithe, I give offerings, I do alms, I sure have a need. But don't give up and call us for prayer because we'll pray with you. We'll stand with you in faith for the Lord to bring what he wants to bring into your life, which is sufficiency and blessing upon blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, in Proverbs, it talks about a generous spirit will be refreshed, mm -hmm. will be made whole. Yes. And really what you're saying here is be generous. Oh, be generous, you know, mm -hmm. almost to a fault because mm -hmm. you can't beat God giving. We, oh, that's mm -hmm. so trite. You can't beat God giving. But think about it. None of us will ever have the testimony that we gave more to God that he gave to us. Oh, we'll, we'll oh that never, never. never. So never. knowing that, that's a principle. I just wish I could get people to, to mm -hmm. see that because in 1 Kings 17, when, when, uh, 17, when Elisha came to the widow woman and, mm -hmm. and she says, you know, we're just going to starve. We're just, mm -hmm. I'm just going to bake this last little cake. Yep. And he says, fear not. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be afraid that if you help somebody, you're going to mm -hmm. have lack. He said, mm -hmm. fear not. Go on and make your plans, mm -hmm. but make for me first. Mm -hmm. And the meal never ran out. Mm -hmm. See, I go and during this economy, people need to be reading those kinds of stories. Mm -hmm to just get faith from it. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, if I give, God's gonna give mm -hmm. back to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't give to get, but you mm -hmm. give and expect. Mm -hmm. I just expect that I'm never gonna have a financial need. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't expect to have a financial need. I love that, give and expect. Yes, don't give I to get, you have give to, and expect. I think you have to have faith. Yes, yes. And sometimes, Sarah, I don't think people are generous, they are obedient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we do it yes. out of obedience to God mm -hmm. and expecting. Oh, absolutely. It's wonderful to have a generous heart. Oh, and yes. I think the more you give, the more oh, generous yeah. you oh, become. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it starts, I think, oh, yeah. with an act of obedience. Yes, yes. Yeah, agree? totally yeah, agree. Yeah. And I know there are people watching right now that are struggling to be obedient. God yes. has spoken to you to say, hey, I want you to give, I want you to plant some seeds. And you're struggling to be obedient. And we wanna pray for you that God would help you, give you grace, 
to be obedient and to be generous. So get on the phone, leave a prayer request on our website. We want to pray for you. And many of you watching right now, in fact, I really want to pray for you. You're struggling with an employment challenge. You don't like where you're employed or you're unemployed and you need a job. So I want to pray for you specifically now that God would help you with that employment challenge. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now for yes, each God. person watching yes. who's struggling with employment, yes. be that a tricky, difficult situation or an unemployment problem. I thank you, God, that you have answers, you have wisdom, you have provision to meet this need. So thank you, God, that you organize and order their steps uh, if there's things in their hearts that kind of sa sabotage the employment issue, then reveal those things. And I thank you, God, for helping each person with this challenge in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, Sarah, a good thing that people can do who, uh, who are unemployed, mm -hmm. if you know there's a company where you really want to work, I know this is kind of far out, but why don't you go and ask them, can you volunteer for four Ooh, hours la, in the la. afternoon? How great is that? Just say, listen, you know what? You know, yep. you, you spend the morning get, sending mm -hmm. out your resumes or whatever, but you say, listen, mm -hmm. I have the skills. I'd like to just volunteer. You, mm -hmm. th They just need to know who you are. Mm -hmm. You get that exposure. Mm -hmm. Just try it. I love that. Yeah, just follow it. That's, <laughs> when I worked at the church, there were many people who came and just volunteered mm -hmm. in the position. And then mm -hmm. when we needed somebody, we knew that person. They were mm -hmm. already in place. We said, mm -hmm. why don't we just hire you? How great and is that? And you know what you were doing? You were sewing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So remember what you give. That's you right. need to give expecting. That's you right. gave that expecting and That's you right. got it. That's right. But it's important too that we expect from the right source. Yes. Right. Because I think sometimes we give to a, be that a church and then we yes. think, well, the church has to meet that need. Yes. If you give to God, then he's your source. Yes. And everything else just right. becomes a re- source. Right. Absolutely. That's you know, good. and I tell everybody, listen, God is the source. Your job is just a chosen channel for a chosen sure. season. Sure. And sometimes God says, okay, mm -hmm. the season is up for that. Well, that was just a channel anyway. Mm -hmm. God is, you know, it's like mm -hmm. the remote. You get, you give mm -hmm. God the remote control to your life mm -hmm. and he chooses the channel. Man. He says, okay, that job is over. I'm choosing another channel now for you. And so you got to keep that mindset. Mm -hmm. When my husband's job was, when his, when his job died, we said, listen, that job wasn't our source anyway. Mm -hmm. It wasn't our source. Absolutely anyway. true. Yeah, absolutely true. And so I want to encourage you. We're going to continue to get some really rich keys of revelation on 30 days to taming your finances. You don't want to miss it. We're going to come right back. And in the meantime, I of course want to encourage you, please call and let us pray for you, specifically with your money. If there's some debt issues, some employment issues, um, just some challenges on managing your money, we want to call. We want you to call and we want to pray for you. Are you struggling with debt? Does it seem like you can't keep any money in your pocket? Do you wish you had someone to ask all your financial questions? We have the answer. Let certified public accountant Deborah Pigay guide you to financial stability with her book, 30 Days to Taming Your Finances. By using her own financial mistakes as examples, combined with biblical principles and soul searching questions, Deborah teaches you how to diminish debt, spend smart, save strategically, and much more. Begin your journey to a satisfying future with Deborah's refreshingly simple 30 day guide to financial peace. For your gift of $20 or more, we will send you this guide to a healthy financial life, along with Maryland's Supernatural Strategy CD and Provisional Scripture Card, which will help you develop your own plan for success and recognize God's plan for you. Let these resources renew your financial confidence today. Call or click to receive this very special offer. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night Care from Saving Moses. I am so delighted you are watching. Sarah, Mm -hmm. We have a guest today yep. that I believe will bring people over the top mm -hmm. in probably the biggest crisis of their lives. Mm -hmm. 
Money seems to be the biggest crisis of our lives. Mm -hmm. And I talked about it with everyone, all ages, all kinds of circumstances, situations. Money talks and you're saying, yeah, and mine says goodbye. (laughs) But Deborah Mm -hmm. is going to talk to us today about emotional spending. This is some of in your book, you have 30 chapters, yes, and it's so good yes. for taming your finances in 30 days. What about emotional spending? Well, it's one of those drivers, and we have to, I say that every decision we make is an emotional decision. Think about emotion means, uh, it, it's, it's in motion, it motivates. Mm-hmm. So you gotta ask yourself when you buy something, before you buy it, I say ask yourself a few questions. What am I really buying? Am I buying self-esteem? Am I buying really? just uh, peace because I'm angry? Mm-hmm. Am I frustrated? What am I, why mm-hmm. am I spending? What's motivating my spending? Mm-hmm. I had a period in my life when I, when I was buying self-esteem. I had to have a certain car and that car was stayed in the shop. It just stayed in the shop. And mm-hmm. so I was spending a lot of money unnecessarily, but it was so tied to my self-worth. Until mm-hmm. finally my husband said, you know what, you're gonna look up, you're gonna be an old lady and all you're gonna have is a bunch of car repair bills. <laughs> And I thought, eh, not good. So I got rid of the car. But it was, I couldn't imagine how tied I was to that for my self-esteem. Mm-hmm. And so when you buy these designer clothes, and, and there are mm-hmm. people who are still doing this. Mm-hmm. It's because when you, when you feel less than, you spend, you spend more than. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you feel less than, you spend yeah. more than. So you gotta ask yourself, okay, well, why am I validating myself with these kind of trappings? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously you're in the wrong group of people that you're running with. Or you may have, somebody may have told you that mm-hmm. you were nothing, and mm-hmm. you're gonna validate yourself by saying, but if I buy something that everybody mm-hmm. esteems, then they'll esteem me. Because hmm. they'll say, oh, look at that name brand dress. She must really be something. Hmm. So we got to get in touch with that. And we do that with jewelry. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. We're so, I mean, you yeah. marry the guy because, and I heard this story. Reese told me one of his friends when he was an engineer that uh, his friend was asking, you know, his fiance, would you marry me? And she's told him ahead of time, don't come to me with anything less than a carrot. Oh, so shallow. Wow. <laughs> I was like, that's, you talk about buying self-esteem. Yeah, oh, yeah. my goodness. But you know, that's a hard one to come face to face with. Mm-hmm. Again, I go back to uh, Psalms 51. God desires truth in the inward mm-hmm. parts. I always ask, I, I say this, would I buy this if everybody in the world were blind? Mm-hmm. Think about that. If nobody could see it, would I still buy it? Mm-hmm. Because if the answer is no, I wouldn't still buy it, that means I'm not buying it. Because for me, I'm buying it because I want people to see it and judge mm-hmm. me by it. Mm-hmm. That's something. You know the psalm you just quoted from? Mm-hmm. I love this psalm. It's Psalm 51, 51. 6. And I, I want the Spirit of God to really impress this on your heart. Thou, God, desires truth in the inward man, and in the hidden man you'll make me to know wisdom. What is truth? Truth is the Word of God. Where does God want it? On your coffee table? No, He wants it. see it in your heart. Then he takes that truth and brings it up here for wisdom. So no truth here, no wisdom here. So I say that to you today. Put truth in your heart so that you have wisdom for your finances. And if this is a crisis for you, call us for prayer. We don't condemn you. We we do not condemn. We pray. Because we want you, God, to be honored in your finances. This is an area Mm -hmm. where we can honor God the most. It really is because Mm -hmm. money is spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's why we worship God with our giving. You know, Mm -hmm. that's spiritual. And then how we manage when you know the the story of the talents, how God gave each one according to his ability, Mm -hmm. his ability to manage. Mm -hmm. I always say, listen, however much money you have access to, that's what you've proven you can manage. If Mm -hmm. you want more money, you want more resources, prove to God that you can manage more. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Yeah. You know, that's why he's watching you. He's watching your integrity. He's watching your giving. He's watching, um, th- he's watching how you handle the money. Mm-hmm. He's watching mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and he's watching the motives. Oh. What's in your heart? Absolutely. What causes you to buy these things? Like you said, yeah. you know, buying the car or buying the clothes or buying the jewelry, buying esteem, all that stuff. Yeah. Those things really, they absolutely cut our legs off if we're not aware of it. They do. And you know what's interesting? We're in a culture that, that kind of promotes that. If you watch the advertisements, mm-hmm. they're always telling you you're inadequate. So you need this because if you get this mm-hmm. is the latest and the greatest. Mm-hmm. You need this. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're inadequate. So you buy into it. Mm-hmm. You know, I consciously watch commercials now. I'll say, let me see what they're trying to tap into this mm-hmm. time. What are they trying to tell me that I need it? If I don't have it, I'm right. going to be less than. Right. Because you can't, you can't fall prey to that. Right. That is really serious stuff, isn't it? It is. It is. What about integrity? Mm-hmm. Ah. Talk to us about that. Well, integrity is a mathematical word. 
it's 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 uh, it, it means to integrate. It becomes one to become one. It's like from the word integer it means uh -huh. a whole number as opposed to a fraction. Yep. That's why when we tell the truth, we tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But I like to talk about integrity because what it does, it lines up our confession with our conduct. We confess that God is our supply, our supplier, but our conduct will say otherwise. Then we'll lie and say we live hmm. somewhere else so we can get uh, less insurance, have to pay less insurance or whatever. But when we bring these two together, our conduct and our confession, and we make them one, that means we're behaving according to the word. Our behavior is consistent with the word of God. Integrity, that's so important. And let me tell you what a slap mm. it is in God's face when we decide that we need to resort to dishonesty to make a way. Because God has said he's going to supply. And what you're saying when you resort to dishonesty, you're saying, God, I need some more resources, but I don't think you're going to give them to me. Hmm. So I'm going to help myself. What a slap in God's face. Hmm. When he's just waiting for that opportunity to show himself strong. Tell us about integrity. What? Give us some lines here. Okay, give you, here, here's the deal. Always tell the truth, no, even if it hurts. My husband uh, worked on a job once where if they had, a, if there was a certain accident, this was like 20 years ago, but if they broke a uh, mirror or something, that was considered an accident and you could get laid off. Well, he broke it and most guys in his area didn't report it, but he broke it, he got laid off. And so we figured up our bills, gosh, 30 years ago. We were gonna be $1,000 short. Someone called us and said, listen, God told me to mail you $1,000. Wow. Yes. And 30 years ago? Yes, that that's, was a lot that's of money. A lot of yeah. money. $1,000, that's and a she couldn't afford it. But she said, I'm sending it to you now because what I've learned is that it's not just enough to obey. You gotta obey quickly. Mm. That's great. Yeah, obey really quickly. Good. Yeah. What are some other areas where we try and cut corners, you know, and, and it's a lack of integrity? Because sometimes we do it on the job, but I think there are other areas, and we, we kind of justify it in our minds, and yeah. then we come into deception, because then we believe our own... Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we could rationalize anything. Yeah. You could say, well, they weren't being fair to me, so I paid myself, mm -hmm. you know, and especially on the job, if you think you deserve yeah. a raise, and now that they don't give it to you, you take supplies home. You do little things that pay yourself, that's that's not good. Right. You know, uh -huh. that's Jacob refused to do that. You know, when Laban kept cheating him, yep. you uh -huh. know, he said, I haven't eaten ram from your flock. Mm -hmm. You can't eat ram from your employer's flock and expect God to bless you. Wow. OK, sure. that's you can't really do that. that. You can't steal from good. your employer. Yeah. yeah. No, you can't do that. Are there other areas? What about our taxes? Oh, goodness, please. <laughs> Same, same principle. Yeah. When you cheat on your taxes, you said, I want a bigger refund. I want more money back. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to give it to me, Lord, so here's the way I'm going to make for myself. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want us making our own way. Mm -hmm. He wants the honor and the privilege of doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So True. tell the truth and let God, mm -hmm. let the consequences fall on God. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have to trust God. And you may be watching right now and you're like, whew, you're totally stepping on my toes. You know, it's an integrity gap in my life. Well, please get on the phone. We want to pray for you that God would help you to overcome that gap that you wouldn't try and depend on your own ways, but you would acknowledge God in all your ways and he'll direct your path. So get on the phone. We wanna pray for you that God would help you to overcome that gap of integrity. Get on the website, leave your prayer request there because we know that God can help you. Wherever you feel inadequate, God makes up that inadequacy and absolutely overcomes it. So don't try and figure out your own strategies, your own methods, your own ways, you know. Trust God and he can absolutely direct, guide your steps and provide for those deficiencies, provide for that gap, provide for what seems like impossible. Get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. We love to pray for you. And I want to say to Deborah, thank you so much for being oh, with us today. My joy, my joy. We love we getting love to hang you. out with you. Love you. I love getting to share you with our audience because I love hanging out. You know, we talk, <laughs> what's the books you're reading? What are you praying about? What's going yeah. on? Text message, all that yeah. stuff. And love I love, it. we love getting to share you with our audience because yes. you're so real, so personable practical, down to earth, and I love the fact that you don't try and put on airs and pretend to be somebody that you're not. You're Deborah, and we love your guts. We I'm totally a product of Maryland's teaching. Yay! What do you expect? <laughs> so God That's bless sweet. you. We love you. God has good things for your finances. Are you struggling with debt? Does it seem like you can't keep any money in your pocket? Do you wish you had someone to ask all your financial questions? We have the answer. Let certified public accountant Deborah Piguet guide you to financial stability with her book, 30 Days to Taming Your Finances. By using her own financial mistakes as examples, combined with biblical principles and soul-searching questions, Deborah teaches you how to diminish debt, spend smart, save strategically, and much more. Begin your journey to a satisfying future with Deborah's refreshingly simple 30-day guide to financial peace. 
For your gift of $20 or more, we will send you this guide to a healthy financial life, along with Maryland's Supernatural Strategy CD and Provisional Scripture Card, which will help you develop your own plan for success and recognize God's plan for you. Let these resources renew your financial confidence today. Call or click to receive this very special offer. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night Care from Saving Moses. We all need additional finances, isn't that true? I think every one of us, if we sat down and really looked at it, would say, oh, I need help in this area, I need help in that area. But I want to tell you about how to begin a miracle. When I look in the Bible, I see that people did something in the natural before God did something in the supernatural. You say, well, what are you talking about? Well, remember at the Red Sea, God told Moses, lift your rod, then the Red Sea opened. But until he lifted his rod, the Red Sea didn't open. You say, well, that isn't in the New Testament. Oh, yes, there is. Remember the first miracle Jesus did? They did something in the natural before supernatural came. And what they did is they filled the water pots with water. And then when they drew it out, it was a miracle. It was wine. And so I'm going to ask you to do something in the natural that will absolutely bring faith in the supernatural. You can go through your Bible and trust me and look at all the miracles. Almost all of them are preceded by an act in the natural. I'm going to ask you to sow a seed in Maryland Hickey Ministries because that will be an act in the natural, I believe, that will release supernatural finances for you. So I want you to call in right now and just say, I need a miracle in my finances, and I'm sowing a seed today in faith. I am performing in the natural, which God uses to bring the supernatural. So tell on the phone how much you're believing for. You know, what are you believing for? A raise? How much? Believe for something in particular and receive something in particular. 